and I am heading to Central Park to go for a walk with Ankita and I'm also bringing my notebook because we are essentially going to mastermind on our goals for next year, breaking it down into quarters and also holding each other accountable towards our big goals. So excited to get out. It's a beautiful day. It is so sunny outside. I checked the weather and it's like also, I think like 55, 60 degrees, which is so great. So I'm just gonna wear this little uh, running jacket. I just ordered it from Rent the Runway. I'm like, ooh, it has like velvet on it, velour. Yeah, I am like obsessed with this running jacket. It is so cute. I have a huge mess behind me. It's fine, I'm gonna clean later. But then these leggings are from Lululemon and I've had them forever. Think of you, although you're far away, we're under the same stars. Oh, I got this new bronzer from NARS and it's quite dark. Oops, I might have put on a little bit too much. Don't tell. I got home from a wonderful day with Ankita. We walked around Central Park, went to lunch at this amazing Italian spot and just kind of talked through a lot of personal development things like areas of our lives that we really want to improve in, habits that we think that we could better. And it was really great. I came to a lot of epiphanies personally, and there's a siren outside, New York City baby. This is always what's happening in the background. <laughs> you guys have no idea how many TikToks I haven't been able to record because I was like in the middle of such a good thought and then the loudest siren known to man came outside. But thankfully, you know, they're going to help people and I'm, I'm thankful we have, you know, 
sirens in general. Anyways, when I got back, um, Frankie came over and did my hair. I think it looks so good. I asked to go a tiny bit straighter this time so it doesn't have as much volume and oomph. I just wanted it to look a little bit more casual. And I thought we would close out the night with our huge doing the advent calendar. So today is supposed to be a soda light. Soda light, it sounds like a soda light version but it's spelled S-O-D-A-L-I-T-E. I have it up on the screen. Oh my gosh. Okay, there's a cotton ball in here so far. I don't know why suddenly the, the latest issue is not being able to open the little flap. All right, there's a cotton ball and there's nothing else. We're not even gonna expend any energy on the disappointment of that, but it's supposed to be a be this beautiful, rich, royal blue stone. So I cannot wait to find that. I guarantee it's an 18 because I can feel two stones in there. So that's okay. We're going to do that, you know, I guess here towards the end of the week. But let's look at the meaning of it. Soda Light brings emotional balance and calms panic attacks and enhances self-esteem, self-acceptance, and self-trust. It balances the metabolism, boosts the immune system, and overcomes calcium deficiencies. Wow, that is like a whole list of a ton of things. That's amazing. It brings order and calmness to the mind and encourages rational thought, objectivity, truth and intuition, along with the verbalization of feelings, emotional balance. Okay, that's that's really interesting. It's supposed to be connected to the throat and the third eye chakras. I love that. As you guys know, I am doing the 12 days of Christmas via everything that I learned this year. So for today, as the second day of Christmas, we'll talk about the second month of 2020 for me, which was February. February 1st was my move-in day into this apartment. It was my moving day to New York City. I flew out here on January 31st, and then I was here. And right off the bat, I loved it so much. I want to make that really clear. I was just like, this is amazing. I loved my apartment. I loved everything about my apartment down to like cooking eggs in the morning and waking up every single morning with the gorgeous windows it was all so magical but I very quickly became really lonely and it was just a huge change for me it was a huge shift a huge transformation and I had to be in the up level while also trying to feel calm through the up level right like everything in my life had changed so drastically and I had to lean into that and still like show up for it every single day and I feel really fortunate that I had you know my best friend Rachel lived here and lives here still, but she lived here at that time. So I had her, but I just remember when she would be at work, I mean, I'd work for myself. So I would be like in my apartment by myself and I wasn't used to being alone and it was really scary. Of course, now we're so used to being alone after freaking quarantine and all of that this year. But the biggest lesson that I took away from February was that sometimes in discomfort, the best thing that you can do is find comfort within it. I mean, people always say like find comfort in discomfort, but understand that discomfort is the perfect breeding ground for you to figure out what is it that you can do to bring yourself comfort rather than relying on other people and other scenarios on a sense of home on an environment that you're used to like what is the strong stable center that you can find within you and i really think you never know that until you are in a situation that's uncomfortable and you figure out how to self-soothe and i really had to learn quickly how to self-soothe like what are the things that made me feel better and that doesn't always mean like a night in with Gilmore Girls, although that is definitely helpful. A lot of that means too, what are things that make me feel better by way of, it gives me new passion and new excitement and new inspiration. You know, like that's returning to the things that I love to do. That's making sure I'm in charge of my schedule. And so I have things with friends lined up. That's taking charge of my health. So I feel the best I can, even if emotionally I feel a little bit off. Learning to self-soothe is just, it's one of the greatest things you can do so you're not relying on anybody else and you're also okay in discomfort. So I would say that was the biggest lesson. I hope that was at least a bit helpful. I am going to finish up the night. It's only 7 p.m., but I can, I can tell it's about to snow. I know that. I have like a snow sense, like a sixth snow sense from growing up in Colorado, and I can tell it's going to, and I'm just still feeling really tired and run down. So I'm going to wrap up the video here maybe film a TikTok or two, and I will see you tomorrow for day 15. Oh my gosh, only 10 days left. That means we are approximately three-fifths of the way through, 60% of the way through. That's wild, but it's been such a ride, such a joy. I actually, you know, although I am getting burnt out as I've been really transparent about, I still have been loving every second of it. So I just wanted to thank all of you who have watched consistently, or even the new ones of you who are here for the first time. It's so lovely to have you. Thanks for caring about the content that I put out. And if there's anything else you wanna see in New York City, Christmas-wise, 
I will be in New York City throughout this week and then I'll be with my family. So it's like the last week to film some of the good New York City stuff. Obviously it's not the same New York City Christmas as usual, but we can still have fun with it and just let me know what you wanna see. All right, you guys, I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye.